Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you tonight. I just got done watching Mick Foley, Cheap Pops. I honestly thought that the uh, name of the uh, comedy show was going to be Have a Nice Night slash Cheap Pops, but uh, Have a Nice Night was honestly a one-hour special of the best of Mick Foley uh, that was hosted by Byron Saxton and uh, Renee uh, Young. Uh, they went over all of the uh, the great moments of, of Mick Foley and everything that he's been through in WWE. Uh, but the Cheap Pops was actually what was filmed at the uh, Full Sail University. Uh, it was the uh, one-hour comedy show. Honestly, very fun. Honestly, very enjoyable. I will tell you that, honestly, this was basically the same set that Foley did when he came to Sacramento, California before WrestleMania 29. I don't know if, uh, like I said in my uh, my video that I made last night, uh, that uh, maybe it, he was going to be doing uh, the sets that he had retired, uh, so that way he'd still be able to tour around and show. I had heard interviews with him on Wrestling Observer and uh, with uh, Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez, and he basically said that he used um, a set you know, from WrestleMania to WrestleMania. When the next year's WrestleMania comes around, that's where he retires the set that he does and he starts working on new material. That way, when he goes around and, and tours the cities that he's been to before, the people that are coming to see him for a second or a third time have, you know, not seen the show that is going down. Honestly, a lot of this set was talking about uh, Brock Lesnar uh, beating The Undertaker and uh, Mick Foley being very vocal about that The Undertaker's streak never should have ended. Um, it was almost like he was setting up for a big joke that was to come later on in the night um, where he was putting over Brock Lesnar and, and, and basically saying that even though he didn't agree with it, uh, you know, basically... You know, it was it was pretty cool to come down to it. Uh, Mick Foley talked about all of his career moments uh, of him, you know, breaking into WCW, um, and Kevin Sullivan telling him that he was going to be um, using his finisher that night, and he was very surprised because when he got to the uh, center stage uh, in Atlanta, the same place that we went and saw Ring of Honor, um, and when we were there for WrestleMania 27 weekend. Um, he saw that he was working the Steiner Brothers with a very unknown tag team partner. And basically the plan for the night was for him to make his debut, uh, lose the match, get killed by the uh, Steiner Brothers. Then he would take out his frustrations on his tag team partner and uh, drop the vicious big elbow. And he talked about how that was his finishing move at the time. But uh, it's basically very laughable. You know, he even took a, a shot at Hulk Hogan, saying that the, the, the finisher was very Hulk Hogan-esque, uh, which then he, you know, paused, looked around in the room to make sure that Hogan wasn't there, and then asked for them to edit it off. And then just in case they didn't edit it off, he gave a, uh, you know, sorry, brother, uh, to the camera. And Mick Foley uh, was very, very smart uh, in the way he does his set. Um, he, when he, you know, does jokes, he, he makes jokes about The Miz, uh, you know, he also talked about, you know, people that were on the roster today. Um, when he, he talked about himself turning on his own tag team partner, he was saying that it was as, um, words of advice uh, to give to Damian Sandow. Uh, throughout the set, I, I liked the way that Mick Foley, you know, threw out names uh, from his past, um, you know, from wrestling's past, whether if it was like Ahmed Johnson or um, uh, just uh, Jim Cornette, names that would get a pop. Uh, from the uh, wrestling fans that would be into the crowd. Um, once the uh, the set, you know, started rolling, it was very PG. Uh, he, you know, asked his son to keep track of the, how many times he used the F word throughout the night. Uh, kept on, you know, building up to the fact that he was going to use one later on in the show. And um, he kept it very clean. Did not do the sex story or the live sex story from Germany uh, about him, The Rock, Al Snow, and an unknown wrestler heading out and, and checking out the the the, uh, the live sex bars. Actually, I don't think that was in Germany. I think it was in Amsterdam. It was somewhere, somewhere overseas, basically. But he didn't tell that story, so it doesn't go along with this. But uh, um, you know, he didn't really touch on you know Stone Cold Steve Austin or the Rock stories at all. I think that when he does the live comedy show, the set's a little bit longer than what he did out there tonight. But uh, I'm hoping that we see more of these in the foreseeable future for Mick Foley. I, I really liked it, uh, seeing this. It was a break in the action, uh, basically watching wrestling uh, related material uh, without actually watching wrestling. Um, you know, the, with uh, this week's um, WWE Network being so jam packed full of things with Monday Night Raw, 
Hell, we had Extreme Rules on Sunday, Monday Night Raw on Monday, uh, the King of the Ring on Tuesday, this was here on Wednesday, uh, Thursday we have the Jericho versus, uh, uh, Stephanie McMahon uh, podcast, which is going to be on after SmackDown if you're going to watch that. And then Friday, the Mayweather versus uh, uh, Big Show deal. So it's already a week packed full of things. I know that when they do the December um, you know, week of wrestling, they normally do the same thing with a pay-per-view, Monday Night Raw. Uh, then you got tribute for the troops and this, that, or the other. They, they pack that week full of... Uh, uh, I think they even do a live SmackDown, if, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But uh, Mick Foley, I, I give you a, a big thumbs up. Thank you for the entertainment here on the WWE Network tonight. It was a fun night, and I was glad that I got to spend it with you. Peace out, everybody.